Uh, I get up at around 5 o'clock in the morning and then I get ready, have bath and um, it takes me about uh, one hour to get ready and then uh, I do yoga exercise and uh, after that I have breakfast and um, after that I read some newspapers for about half an hour. What kind of yoga exercise do you do? You do asanas? I do mostly Surya Namaskar. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you do some pranayamas as well? Pranayam, yes, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. And uh, after breakfast, I read newspapers mm -hmm. for about half an hour. Then I sit quietly and um, I write every day since 1980. 1st January 1980, I started writing, so every day I write and I don't know what I am going to write, mm -hmm. but I pick up the pen mm -hmm. and whatever comes to my mind, mm -hmm. I write. Mm -hmm. So I write for about uh, half an hour or so. Mm -hmm. And after that, sometimes I study physics uh, or sometimes if some interesting book I am reading. Mm -hmm. I read about some philosophy or mm -hmm. like that. And um, sometimes I don't do anything, just walk back and forth in my room and um, just doing nothing like that. Then uh, sometimes I go in the city if I have some work. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I don't have a computer at home, so I go to a cyber cafe. So you write by hand? I write by hand, mm -hmm. yes. yes. And um, so I go to cyber cafe and I check my email and uh, Facebook. I have many friends, mm -hmm. I communicate. Mm -hmm. So I do that for about one hour or so. Mm -hmm. How long is the commute from your home to the city? Uh, it is nearby. It's about a five ten minutes walk. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, I, nice. Maybe I I'm thinking of buying some laptop like this mm -hmm. so that I don't need to go out and yeah. I can check anytime. You know. So, you have internet at home. Right. Yeah. But uh, only thing it becomes heavy. I keep very minimum things in mm -hmm. my room. Right. right. I don't keep many things with me. You know? Yeah. But you can buy a small laptop like this one. Yeah. It's quite nice. I have light. a small uh, mobile on that. I can mm -hmm. check email also. Yeah. Mm. And your writings, what have you been writing about recently? Writing about what I observe, mm -hmm. what is happening outside. Mm -hmm. If I have some dialogue with somebody, I write about that. Mm -hmm. Or I <coughs> uh, some kind of challenge challenging myself, mm -hmm. uh, whatever comes. So, some experiences if I in nature or like that. Yeah. And you mentioned your students in Northern California. These are like Rishi Valley students, for yes. example. Yes, Okay, I thought Whom so. Whom I taught in 1980s and mm -hmm. 90s. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're in touch with a lot of your past students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're yes. in touch. How many years did you teach at the Christian Ready schools? Uh, since '79. Okay. So '79 to 1998. Oh, so you said you retired in 2007. Yes, but after that, after Rishi Valley, I went to another school, uh -huh. KFI school called Sayadri School. Right. After Sayadri School, I went to. Valley School in Bangalore okay. and I taught there for three years and I retired from Valley School in 2007. I see. So how many years did you teach at Krishnamurti School? About 27. Okay. 28 Do you years. get some sort of a pension? No, I don't get. Um, when I joined the school, Rishi Valley, at that time I told them that I I have not come uh, as a job and uh, I, I don't take any money. So first five years I did not take any money. Mm -hmm. Then the school said that you should take some money. So I said okay, whatever. So they were giving me some very little money 
just to cover my expenses. Right. After that, uh, then they said that you should take money like any other teacher. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. So I was getting money like any other teacher, like that. So that money was uh, good enough for my expenses. Right. So you yeah. saved basically and so yes. on. Yes. But I worked in Canada mm -hmm. and I had saved some money. Mm -hmm. uh, four years I had worked. Yeah. I mean, I didn't mean to be nosy about your, pers your personal situation, but I was just curious more generally. Yeah. Do the teachers of Krishnamurti schools in mm -hmm. India who teach for a few decades, yeah. when they retire, yes. do they get something or usually nothing? Uh, they, they do get uh, if because my I had a Canadian passport uh -huh. and, uh, you still so, have huh? you have a Canadian passport passport right yes. so um, I was not also eligible mm -hmm. to get a regular appointment mm -hmm. so my appointment was like some honorary mm -hmm. uh, honorarium they were giving me some mm -hmm. money mm -hmm. but uh, other teachers uh, they have a regular job and uh, mm -hmm. they get uh, many benefits. Also. So in India then when somebody retires, do they get uh, like a social security from the state? No, there is no social sec security. But they have something like a provident fund mm -hmm. where uh, they get some money when they retire from that organization in which in this yeah. case, from Rishi Valley, for example, yeah, right. for the rest yeah. of their life. Yes. Okay, that's my. That was my question. So that makes sense. Yeah. They have some security. That's right. For their physical needs. Yes. But I did not get any uh, when I retired. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you ever regret not having gotten married? Because you're like me. You you've been single all your life. Yeah. No. <laughs> it 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 is a very much. Uh, necessary for me to be alone mm -hmm. because when I am with somebody I don't have the freedom to do what I like to do right and uh, so I, I don't regret at all yeah on the, on the other hand I feel very happy yeah. that uh, I, I was I'm able to do whatever I like to do yeah. um, and uh, when you get married then you have to earn money for your children and that's responsibilities, right. all that. It's a big so, project. Right. So, I don't regret at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I find it is better that I did not marry. Yeah, yeah I feel the same way actually. Having mm -hmm. kids is like a long-term project. Yeah. And you, you, not only you have to make a living to feed them now, but you have to think 20 years down the road mm -hmm. and their college and so on and so forth. So, yeah. I respect people, people who do that. You know, right. Yeah. Um, my parents did that, mm -hmm. but it's right. not my cup of tea. Yeah. I have other priorities. Mm. Mm. You met Krishnamurti. You had a <clears throat> some personal interviews with him. Yes. <clears throat> I remember. Uh, you want to know the whole story? Or? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I came to America first time in 1969 and I studied uh, for my master's degree and when I came to America I did not know anything about America I was not exposed to Western culture so it created many problems uh, all kinds of problems like health problem financial problem academic problem food and climate loneliness, all that. But slowly, uh, all these problems were solved. Uh, academic problem, I was doing very well and uh, I also worked in the summer holidays in Chicago, earned some money. I also worked on campus. Later on, I got scholarship from the department. So financial problem was not there, academic problem was not there and we were cooking Indian food with some other students, so food and climate, everything was fine, except uh, thinking uh, was a problem about future and all that. So I completed my master's degree, and then I continued for PhD. So when I was uh, doing my PhD at Iowa State University, I was passing by a bookshop, uh, university bookshop and I saw one book of Krishnamurti 
through the window. Uh, it was the flight of the eagle. Yeah. And um, I did not know who was Krishnamurti at that time. But uh, I liked the title uh, of the book and I liked the photograph. So I bought that book. And when I started reading, I found that I could see what he was talking in myself. Like he, he was asking questions like, why do we think of ourselves as Indian or Chinese or right. American? Mm -hmm. Because I was thinking myself like an Indian. I was not able to uh, communicate well with mm -hmm. Americans. Mm -hmm. And um, so he said that all human beings go through problems of psychological nature, like fear or anger, jealousy, and uh, loneliness is common to all human beings. So then I felt that I was not alone. There were people like me, and I began to observe things outside, and I found that Americans were also lonely in their own country. And um, there was a lot of, they were watching all these bad films, violent films, in 1970s, and there were many hippies and at that time. So Drugs. when when I realized that I am not different psychologically, I begin to open up, and then I could communicate with people of many different nationalities, and I lived with them, shared apartments with them, but. Um, important thing what I liked what Krishnamurti said is that all our problems of psychological nature it comes from thinking and from thinking comes a sense of I or sense me of self, thinker right. <clears throat> and once this uh, thinker comes then it says I like it I don't like and all that problem of choice, comparison, and all that separation, separation uh, starts. So this was something very new to me because I had not come across anybody who said that from thinking comes the thinker, me, you know, self or ego. So I had an office. I used to sit quietly in my office and try to watch what is happening inside me, how these thoughts arise. You know. So when I was very, very uh, acutely aware, there was nothing happening. Thoughts, thinking stopped. And then it was a wonderful uh, thing State. To state, to feel no thought, no problem, nothing. Everything is wonderful, you know. So this became very important thing uh, for me to just watch, not to do anything, but just watching and allowing thing to unfold. And then I read many books of Krishnamurti for four years. Especially, I like the commentaries on living, mm -hmm. yes, in which he goes step by step with, on one-to-one -one basis with people of many different backgrounds, and he leads them to the source from where all these problems arise. You know? So I begin to feel something within me, in my brain, my body, many experiences, and uh, I wrote a letter to Krishnamurti, and uh, in nine, a few months after I read the first book, and I wrote to him that I have been reading um, books by Ramakrishna, Vivekanand, you know, mm -hmm. the traditional books. Mm -hmm. For many years I was reading, but after reading Krishnamurti's books, I could really see something within myself, how the whole thing is coming. You know. Mm -hmm. so, then I wrote many letters to Krishnamurti uh, over the, the years. 
The first one I got the answer from Mary Zimbalist mm -hmm. and she wrote that Mr. Krishnamurti has read your letter and he hopes that everything will be all right. You know. And after that I kept on writing to him describing what was happening in me but I was not asking any question. So I wrote to him always that I'm not asking you any question. Well, and then um, I'm, I completed my PhD and I went to Waterloo uh, in Ontario. Mm -hmm. I was doing work, uh, research in engineering and I had money and I had also time, holidays. So I came to Ohio in 1977 and um, I, I saw Krishnamurti for the first time. I listened to him. You went mm. to the public talks. Public talks, yeah. yes. And uh, I liked the place, very beautiful place. Mm -hmm. Meet many people here who are interested. Because when I was in uh, Iowa and Canada, there wasn't anybody with whom I could discuss anything. Mm -hmm. So it was, I was, uh, Krishnamurti was like my friend. Uh, mentally, you know, and otherwise people were not interested in that. So I uh, listened to Krishnamurti in 1977. Um, what he was saying was not new to me. I had read everything, I had seen in myself yeah, yeah. many things. But one day uh, he was, one day he was, in 1977, he was standing under a tree so uh, one day after the talk, Krishnamurti was standing under a tree all by himself and we were standing in a queue to get our lunch. And uh, at that time a friend of mine, he said, look, Krishnamurti is standing there, why don't you go and say hello to him. So I said, but I, I don't have anything to talk with him. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was very hesitant to go, but my friend says, no, you go. So I went uh, very close to him and then he looked uh, at me as if he was not looking at me. It was a very strange look. Uh, maybe he was not in this world. But my mind also stopped when I looked at him. I also looked at him and uh, then I extended my hand and then he took my hand and then without saying anything I went back. So that was my first uh, meeting with him, mm -hmm. which was completely non-verbal. Mm -hmm. But I felt very happy uh, after that. And then I, after listening to him for two weeks, I went back to Canada. And um, in 1978, next year again, I uh, visited Ohio, listened to him, then went back again to Canada. And then uh, I had come in contact with some other people, other spiritual group, and uh, I had some friends, they were very good. But and Kay was not a guru, right? Huh? You didn't consider Kay a guru? No, not as guru, yeah. So, uh, these people wanted me to join their community. Uh, they had in uh, Toronto and in Colorado. Who? Uh, <clears throat> They, they were calling integrity group mm -hmm. or emissaries of divine light. Who was the guru? Uh, guru was um, some Lord Martin Cecil, some, right. somebody like that. You know. So I, I did not know anything about him, mm -hmm. but I knew these people, they were very good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to go to their community in mm -hmm. Toronto and they were very happy, cheerful people and very friendly. Mm -hmm. And uh, they also liked me and they wanted me to join the group. So I said that um, I want to listen to Krishnamurti for one more time and then maybe I will join uh, your group. So I came uh, in 1979 and <clears throat> when I was listening one time in the public talk of Krishnamurti, then I saw something around Krishnamurti's face, some kind of aura, the light radiating and a different kind of face appeared there. And um, 
I wondered what it was, but then it disappeared, that face, after a few seconds. But... Uh, <clears throat> what was it? What, what, what kind of face was uh, it? It was the face of an old man with a white beard, you know, and looked like uh, some paintings I may have seen of Leo, Leonardo da Vinci. Some, uh, Vinci, some kind of that face it was there. So, but uh, I listened to him like I had not listened before. Mm -hmm. And I could hear the sounds coming from very far, children, they were uh, shouting and the dogs were barking and the all that. The birds and the breeze. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, <clears throat> uh, next day I wrote a letter to Krishnaji and I did not uh, write about what I saw, but I wrote that I have always considered you like my grandfather ever since you ignited a flame in my life and that was about seven years ago and I wrote that the flame has become brighter now and uh, I wrote that I would be happy to dedicate my life to Krishnamurti schools. I would be, I would like to teach about love, beauty and life to children but I don't know how to do that but I can teach physics and mathematics mm -hmm. for which I am very qualified mm -hmm. and I wrote that uh, it would be very nice to meet you but I know that there are many people like me and you may not have time and something like that I wrote and then I went back to Canada. No, no I, I wrote that and I gave the letter to Mark Lee to give it to Krishnaji and then few days after that there was a music program in the octagonal pavilion and uh, Lakshmi Shankar had come to sing for Krishnaji and uh, all these musicians had come and uh, all uh, everybody had come. I was sitting in front of the musician and we were waiting for Krishnaji to come and suddenly uh, something began to happen to my body. My body became very warm and then something my uh, brain and heart both started throbbing you know and I closed my eyes and then I saw Krishnamurti pass by and he took his seat there and uh, I did not look at him but felt like there was some kind of communion and it went on for some minutes and then uh, I could hear something like leave him alone, something like that, you know. And then it stopped. Everything. Inwardly. Inwardly, yes. You were like full of energy, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then I, everything would look so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I felt that something happened inside which cleaned up uh, many things inside, you know. And uh, then I wrote another letter to him um, and I felt like uh, I had received his blessings. But you didn't, you didn't get an answer to your first letter? The first letter, no, no, mm -hmm. no. So I wrote the second letter and in that I wrote that maybe uh, that you will find in what I wrote in the... Your account, of the, account which is on yeah. my website actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you will find that. Yeah. You know. So second letter I wrote and then I went back to Canada and I could not sleep for two days and then I wrote another letter and in that I wrote that now it is very clear that my life is meant for this Krishnamurti schools and I, I have some money, I would like to give up everything to the foundation you know. and um, I don't remember right now what Do I wrote. give the money to the foundation or give your life to the school? Life and everything I had, yes. But you wanted to also give the money away or you were going to keep the money for your savings? No, I, I wanted to give up whatever I Even had saved. Even the money? Yes. I see. Yeah. So, I could give also my life. Uh, I wrote that may all 
the remaining years of my life be added to your life. And I wrote that the burning volcano of passion must remain alive for many years to come. The tiger must continue to roar for many years to come. <laughs> Something like that, whatever right, came right, right. spontaneously, I wrote that, you know. And then, uh, then uh, the one letter which I wrote from Canada, in that <clears throat> I wrote that it is very clear that my life is meant for, please write back to me. I First time I wrote that please write back to me and so he himself wrote a very nice letter, mm -hmm. a very affectionate letter and he said that he would talk about me to the principal Mr. Narayan mm -hmm. of Rishi Valley School and he will write to you. So <clears throat> a few days after that I got a letter from Mr. Narayan and he, he was in Brockwood Park at that time and he wrote that why don't you come to Brockwood and Krishnaji is also here and we will talk with him about your coming to India. <coughs> So I went to Brookwood and it was my first visit so I did not know how to go and I inquired at the airport how to go to Brookwood and they told me that I had to take a bus and then train. Petersfield and so yeah, on. Yeah, right. So I did that and I told them uh, Brahmdin, not mm -hmm. uh, so it was a strange way I had uh, and the bus driver he dropped me at some place and he said, now you walk on this path right. and you will come to Brahmdin. So I started walking and I walked for a long period. Mm. The, finally I came to one petrol pump and there I asked where is Brookwood Park School. Oh. Then they called the school and uh, somebody came okay. to pick me up. So the and then I met Mr. Narayan and I was very hungry and tired so I had lunch mm -hmm. uh, and then I wanted to go back to my room and I told Mr. Narayan that I'm I'm feeling tired and uh, sleepy so <clears throat> I will go to my room so Mr. Narayan said no no let's just go for a short walk then he took me to the grove and there I saw the trees beautiful uh, mm -hmm. redwood trees <clears throat> and it looked like a <clears throat> uh, very strange, uh, very beautiful, uh, the trees and the flowers and all my tiredness was gone. And I asked, I remember, I asked Mr. Narayan how much the foundation paid to get all this uh, property. So he said 40,000 pounds. So I said, that's all to me, just this one tree looks like 40,000 pounds, you know, <laughs> and, and then he said, look, who is there? So Krishnamurti was uh, in that grove and, and maybe uh, he might have, his presence might have influence, I don't know. Yeah. But then I went back and uh, next day I had... Um, you didn't talk with him then? No, day. I did yeah. not talk. Next day then I had a lunch with him and I was sitting in front of him and he asked me and he asked me some questions about my family background and what they thought about giving up the job in Canada mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so I told him that um, I had help enough my father because he needed my help I had helped him enough and I was free to do what I wanted to do and um, teaching was the thing which I really wanted to do in my life, you know. So then he said, okay. Then he said, um, two things he said. He said, try, uh, go to Rishi Valley, try for a year or two. It's possible that you may not like us mm -hmm. or we may not like you. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing he said, don't stay long at one place. Mm -hmm. So the, when he said that we may not like you, then I thought that it's okay if the school doesn't like me, I will go away, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I did not want anything from the school. I just wanted to help, you know, like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, about uh, going to some different places i told krishna ji that all places are fine for me you know mm -hmm. like that any so he said yes i know that you know and then i went back to canada mm -hmm. to finish my work and uh, then in november 1979 i went to rishi valley what were you doing at that time were you teaching or where in, in canada? Uh, canada i was doing mostly research okay. in this electrical post doctorate huh post doctorate post doctorate, post -doctorate. Mm -hmm. yeah and i was doing little bit of teaching yeah mm -hmm. so i went back um, to india and went directly to rishi valley and there when i entered the campus i saw krishnamurti was coming out uh, for his evening walk and uh, the school vehicle took me to the guest house and there it was a beautiful evening you know um, wonderful light and um, i felt that this place would be my home mm -hmm. and i have always felt like that so it was and then uh, krishna ji was coming to rishi valley every year uh, up to his death mm -hmm. in 86 you know so i had opportunity to talk with him one to one uh, two three times and with a group of teachers many times sometime having lunch with him and mm -hmm. talking mm -hmm. so like that